So I just saw Dumb Money, the new film from director Craig Gillespie, who most notably did I, Tanya. And the film tells the real life story from a couple years ago about a bunch of people who flip the script on Wall Street and get rich by turning GameStop into one of the, ho the world's hottest companies. They absolutely boosted the stock and they did it in the most fuck you way to Wall Street possible. The film stars Paul Dano, who plays Keith Gill, who is kind of like the mastermind of this whole situation. Seth Rogen's in this movie, Pete Davidson, Sebastian Stan, Shane Lee Woodley. It's a really great cast, but I do have some stuff to say about the cast because I don't feel like they were totally utilized, at least to their fullest when it comes to the script. But yeah, let's get right into it. Overall, I thought this this movie was really good and we've had a lot of movies like this come out this year movies like blackberry and tetris and these biopics that really dive into like financial situations and company situations and drama relating to money and capitalism in a way and this is the newest one and it's definitely one of the better ones that we've gotten this year it is really really good this is a movie that is going to be hard to digest for a lot of people although this is a very new situation like the events of this film happened two years ago and i'm, I'm sure a lot of people remember when all of this was in the news because i certainly do but it's still a very complex situation because like the the stock market and investments and stocks and, and shorts and all that stuff that comes with that stuff is not exactly something that's well known by a lot of people. It's a subject that it could get really complicated, therefore making films on it is something that's always been hard to do. For example, a movie like The Big Short, a movie that I love, that movie is just incredibly hard to digest and take at face value, which is why the movie was written and made in a way where it's just so comedic and so ridiculous that somebody who has no knowledge or no understanding of housing markets or anything that happened in the collapse can understand what's sort of going on or at least find entertainment in the characters themselves. This movie, I think, does a much better job than The Big Short of actually presenting what the this, this situation is and the stocks and GameStop going up and down and what they were actually doing to go against Wall Street. I think it makes it easier to digest, especially for me, because like I'm not the biggest person when it comes to like day trading and stuff. Like I don't understand it all completely. I do have a basic understanding of this, but this film made it really easy to follow along and, and and really invest into it and they do spend a lot of time trying to educate the audience on the subject themselves something that kind of takes away from the characters in the film I think now there is a standout Paul Dano is amazing in this movie he plays this guy Keith Gill who's this kind of internet personality he makes live streams and videos imagine his you know a couple scenes in the Batman when he's live streaming and talking to us that's pretty much his entire character in this movie that one scene in the Batman Hey guys. That's him this entire movie. It's actually hilarious. But he's really good here. He's a great actor. Probably the standout of the whole movie. Everybody else just kind of pops up and none of them really have a standout moment. The script doesn't allow for any of these actors to really have that one scene where you really remember them. Like, I can't remember. I know a lot of these people were in the movie, but I can't remember a lot of anything that they did. I think Seth Rogen probably had the second best performance, although he's not in a lot of the film. Pete Davidson... He's here, and I, Pete Davidson's a type of actor that, especially in a movie that's supposed to be kind of a comedy, uh, should be stealing scenes in a large portion of the movie. Like, for example, a movie like Bodies, 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 where he was only in, like, the first 20-ish minutes of the movie, not even, he was an absolute scene, uh, scene stealer in that film. Here, he's in a good amount of this movie, and I just don't really remember anything he did. He had a couple moments that got some laughs out of me, but overall, just not really memorable. Sebastian Stan's here. Sebastian Stan is so talented, and besides, like, one scene, I, I can't really remember remember anything you did here. Shane Lee Woodley's the biggest waste as well. She plays the wife of Paul Dano, and I just... I don't know, there's just not a lot in the script that allowed for these actors to have big moments, but the reason for that was because they wanted to invest the time into actually letting the situation play out, letting the actual events and what Wall Street was doing and the corruption and the terribleness, let all of that play out. Because it is such a fascinating event, it's such an interesting story. I I, I love the, the rebellious nature of the story against, you know, raging against the machine. I absolutely love it, and they really wanted that to live, and it, they definitely do that well, but I wish there was a little bit more character drama behind this, a little bit more character work. Uh, maybe that's just me, but overall, that whole aspect of actually telling the story and tell, you know, educating the audience on this pretty complex and pretty insane event uh, was done really, really well. And I do love how they kind of uh, uh, utilize real life. Uh, uh, events, news broadcasts, like different things. Like, for example, when Dave Portnoy uh, interviewed the guy from Robin Hood, which was the big uh, IPO company that uh, was involved in this whole situation. The movie kind of lets that whole sequence play out. You have Dave Portnoy, the original interview, but then it cuts to Sebastian Stan, and it's like stuff like that is 
throughout the movie. It's littered throughout the entire movie, and I really appreciate that because it blended the film with the reality of the actual events a lot better, especially, like, the congressional hearings. There's, like, a lot of cool stuff here that a lot of, you know, biopics don't exactly get to do because they're not about stuff that's in this modern digital age where everything is online and everything is for the public to see. I do love the pace of this movie. This movie flies by. I mean, it's only about an hour and 40 minutes long, but it flew, man. It was absolutely a joy to watch. The scenes come by quick. The events play out fast. It is funny for the most part. There's a lot of good comedy in here that actually hits. Also, Steve Cohen is in this movie, not the actual Steve. Steve Cohen, but like the character Steve Cohen. If you're not a Mets fan, you're not from New York, you probably have no fucking idea who this guy is. But to me, the you know, as a huge Mets fan, I mean, this is Uncle Stevie. Steve Cohen is literally like a hero to us. And luckily, he's, I was so afraid this movie was just going to make him look like such a douchebag. And it only slightly does. He's still my Uncle Stevie, man. The guy's a stud. He's going to bring the Mets to a World Series. <sighs> probably not. <laughs> Opening day, and here's the first pitch, and the season's over. So Dane DeHaan is in this movie as, like, this dickhead uh, manager at GameStop. And I'm just, like, can we give Dane DeHaan some better roles? Can we stop making him out to be such a dick? I mean, he was a dick in Oppenheimer. He was a dick in Spider-Man. He's a dick in this. Let's get him some leading roles where he's not a dick. Let's make him Levi in Attack on Titan. Why not? There's so many. I mean, Nick Offerman's in this movie. Don't really remember much of what he did here. America Ferrera's in here. Also kind of forgettable. I don't know. This movie just had such a great cast. And unlike, I already mentioned Oppenheimer, unlike Oppenheimer, where I felt like almost every single actor got their moment, even fucking Rami Malek, who's in one scene, gets his moment, but like in this movie, I just feel like maybe they did, maybe I was just kind of sleepy, I, I don't know, but I just feel like there weren't a lot of moments spread throughout this actually engaging story and incredible real life uh, dr dramatic event that took place. That's really my only complaint, I mean the direction was great, the acting was great for what they got, the script is good, it's well paced. Overall, this is a really, really solid movie, and if you're heading to the movie theaters this weekend, I definitely re recommend it. I give Dumb Money a 4 out of 5. Why not? It's really good. So that's the video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more. Make sure to turn on notifications to see everything as I post it, and I will see you all in the next one.